So Grand Isle is Louisiana's only inhabited barrier island. And being a barrier island, it attracts tons of speckled trout this time of year in the yeah. summer. They move to that salty water to go spawn. It's essential for their eggs to float. They need that salt. Those eggs drift inland with the current, and that's where the fry and eventual juveniles grow up and quickly mature before they move out to spawn on their own. That's the good news about Grand Isle. The bad news about Grand Isle is it's about a three hour drive from my house, not exactly right next door, but I make an annual trip down there to fish with my good buddy Chris Macaluso and Captain Frank Dreher. Frank's been fishing down at Grand Isle forever. Really, really good fisherman. And Chris and I always have a ball when we fish with him. So it's road trip time, come along with me. I made it down to Frank's place down here at Grand Isle. The camp is on the back side, the bay side, the Barataria Bay coming out of Bay side. But I'm not sure that's where we're gonna be fishing tomorrow. I think we're gonna to head to the beach side depending on conditions. Maybe head west over to Fushan. So we've done before when I fished with Frank. Who knows? You gotta wake up and see what the conditions are that day and then make your decision. But right now I gotta do a radio interview. C Mac is downstairs cooking up some steaks. This is gonna be a really good night. All right, it's 4.45 a.m. We've just gotten to Bridgeside Marina. We've got about a, I'm gonna say about a five or six knot southwest wind. We're still thinking we may run west to East Timbalier Island. Definitely some bigger trout out that way compared to what you have back here in the back bay. God, this current's rolling, huh? Yeah. Laughing at my little quarter ounce jig head. <laughs> you got an eighth? How deep we throwing into? About 14, 15. 14, that deep, okay. Fish on? Nice trout. All right, good job, C Mac. Nice. Nice. Your second hit, huh? Yeah. All right, so we made a long run this morning, partially in the dark, all of it in choppy seas, to get to what used to be East Timbalier Island. You can see now the island's entirely gone. The rocks are submerged. What would you say, Frank? How deep? Uh, before we come over, it came up to about four feet, five feet. Four feet, five coming feet. Out of, coming out of 15, 16 feet. Okay. Long. They used to be. They used to be how much above the surface? Uh, they used to be what six, seven feet above. Yeah. Wow. So we just started fishing. C Mac got a got a hit, missed it, and then just hooked that fish. So good sign. No other boats out here, and some beautiful trout green water. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. All right, C Mac, one's a fluke. What you got, C-Mac? a good trout. Is it a trout? There you go. Glad you can catch fish. Good fish. trout I would bet yep. feels trout like I finally dialed him in look at Ooh, big trout oh that was a good fish good nets in there. Oh, <sighs> that was a good trout what you got on uh, uh, I got a three ace with a uh, like a glow okay. matrix like that. there he is I thought trout, but now I'm having my doubts. Now I'm really having my doubts. Oh. 
Dude, it hit me on the way down. That's a trout. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. He hit me before I engaged the reel. Oh, he smoked me again on the way down. I missed him. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that was a trout hit. There, oh, God. You got him? Nice trout. Oh. <laughs> Good trout, Frank. There he is. There he is. There he is. I don't think mine's gonna make it, but he might hit the tape. He'll make it. He's gonna make it. He's bigger than I thought he was. He smoked you? He's swimming up with it. Yeah. There he is. There he is. Come up, please come up. Don't stay down. Don't stay down. No, no. Got him, Frank? Trout? Does he come up? No, he came up. I'm trying to keep him down. It's a good fish. You need a net? Good fish. All right. Are you getting hit on the bottom or on the way down? On the on the drop. On the drop. Yeah. Oh sh! I got hit on the bottom. Goodness, Frank. That's better fish here if it's a trout. Net worthy? No, but he's just better when I think it's. Looks like a trout. Oh, he's a trout. Good fish. Nice. Sorry, son. Good fish. If that's a trout, he's good. He's if that is a trout, he's good. Ah, he's foul hooked, that's why. Anybody can hook him in the mouth. I think he's going to take the rod home. Sorry, buddy. Got some preparation age for you. All right, C-Mac, where we caught our fish today is kind of a legendary area in southeast Louisiana, uh, but it doesn't look anything like it used to, does it? Well, no, we're at East Timbalier Island, and you got to kind of make big quote marks in the air now when you say island, because there's really not much left to this island. I mean, where we caught the fish uh, 25, 30 years ago would have been land. And you, you come out here and look at it on your graph, you know, on your fish finder, and you'll see the humps of, of rocks uh, where they tried to put rocks out here to protect the island from washing away and the rocks not only didn't stop the island from washing away but there's uh, you know enormous amounts of evidence that actually made the island sink and wash away faster uh, because putting that artificial hard structure out here created gullies and, and washouts and you know tide washouts and areas where the wave actually would hit it and wash the rocks out and wash the sediment away and so it actually made the island sink faster and disappear faster and that's one of those cautionary tales about barrier island restoration uh, where a lot of folks think that the you know the the ultimate solution to rebuilding barrier islands out here is putting rocks you know it's got to be rocks well in the case of this island and wine island and and uh raccoon island and other places where rocks have been deployed the islands aren't there anymore the rocks are there to a certain extent but the islands move migrate sink and wash away yeah and you know here we, we talked about it a little bit the rocks used to emerge you know six seven feet from the water surface 
and now they're six or seven feet below the water surface, that's simply because everything below it is just compacting, right? Right, all the sand compacted, but the other thing that happened was the waves hit those rocks and dug a trench in front of the rocks. And as it did that, it undermined the rocks, and the rocks are so heavy that as soon as it found that weak point, it would just sink and sink and sink. And now, you know, we're here in what's called Penrod Pass. I mean, we're on top of where the island used to be. Uh, what's left of this island is about two miles to our west now, uh, and it's not much more than a sandbar. And the unfortunate reality is uh, that, that this area is so deep now that there's just no way to practically restore it. And so what the state has had to do is focus its restoration efforts in this basin on other islands and other beaches uh, where they can get some bang for the buck. And right now, uh, you know, just about a mile over our shoulder here up to the north towards Leeville and Fouchon, uh, there's a large scale beach restoration project taking place called West Bell Pass. Just to the west of East Timbalier, there's another barrier island restoration project taking place at, at Timbalier Island. And then just to the west of there at Trinity Island. And all of it combines about a $130 million project in all using oil spill penalty monies where they're taking sediment from 25, 30 miles away at Ship Shoal, putting it in barges and pumping it up on these beaches. And they did a similar project uh, at the Fouchon and, and, and Elmer's Island Beach. Uh, and so it's very innovative work. It's just the unfortunate reality is East Timbalier is, is so far gone. The engineers have determined it's just, it, it, you know, it's not worth it to make the investment to try to rebuild this island. It's just too deep. The tides are too strong and the sediment wouldn't be able to stay here. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by H&H &H Lure Company and by Bill Lewis Lures and by Cito New Orleans and by Sportsman'sOutfitters.com and by Community Motors. So, you know, in a general sense, I, I guess you'd say we're far better off trying to protect what we've got than we are trying to resurrect stuff that's pretty much just gone, right? Well, it's 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 the nature of Louisiana's coast. It's dynamic, it moves, it shifts. Uh, these islands are not supposed to stay in the same places. These beaches are not supposed to be in the same place year after year after year. They move, they migrate. But in the case of this, and you know, we've seen this happen in other parts of the state as well, uh, sometimes you lose an island and, uh, and you try to make it up by, uh, by rebuilding something in another place. I mean, it's important to keep in mind that even though this island is so far gone, it can't be restored, that without the efforts to restore some of the other beaches and islands in the Terrebonne and Timbalier Basin, more than likely those places wouldn't be here at all anymore. And so it's through these efforts of pumping this sediment from offshore back onto these islands like Timbalier and Last Island, uh, where those are gonna be able to stay for 20 or 30 more years. And if that wouldn't happen, they'd be gone by now. All right, East Timbalier is a pale shadow of its former self, but it obviously still holds some fish and it certainly did for us today. It set the world on fire, but we caught a good number of speckled trout. And for this time of year, that's about the best you can hope for. And best of all, we caught every fish on artificial lures, didn't use any live bait. We brought along some croakers, but I don't think a single one of the fish came on a croaker. Shout out to Captain Frank Dreher for a really fun day. All right, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Bass on channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Mastodon.